Yeah, I think they will. Well, when you hear the Windows ones now, like the one we played the other day, yeah, that's nostalgic. What yeah. have I been trying to do? Oh, we had an old Xbox. We were trying to get the Connect working for the children, trying to get to do some physical stuff in front of the telly. Um, and that was odd, trying to get all that going, having not used it for about six or seven years. Oh, yeah, the old Xbox, <coughs> eh? We got an original Pong, actually, up on the um, shelf. You know the Pong? Boop, boop. With the dot, the tennis game? Oh, that, I do remember that. The yeah, original in our one. house... That was called Binatone, um, oh. but I think ours was a fairly rough copy of whatever the original was. Um, but yeah, it was it was such a rough thing to to because one of the controllers didn't quite work, uh, and, so it, you and it lose. wasn't quite in the right place. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that whole beep, beep, beep. There's a good documentary on Netflix actually about Space Invaders and mm -hmm. um, Pac Man. And how they were invented, obviously, and the machines were going everywhere, like over students' campuses and places. And these students hit on this great idea about pirating the software, hacking into it, and making the game harder and giving it more levels and stuff. And they ended up selling bolt-on units to all these things. Nothing to do with the actual company that made the game. But then it got so popular, the company tried to take them to court, and they said, well, don't sue us, employ us. And then <laughs> they ended up employing them. That's a really good documentary on Netflix, that. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. I'll have to watch it. That and about 50 million other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so much. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, Pete Shevlin here. How are you doing? It's Friday. It's 8 o'clock at CNLZ TV. I hope you're very well. Tonight we've got Shino Boy. Well, maybe we do, maybe we don't. We're not really sure. He's from Abuja in Nigeria. He kind of plays African reggae. It's very cool, but his connection isn't so good. So he might appear, he might disappear. We might hear something from him, we might not. We've also got Dean Lane on a very good internet connection from Bolton. Uh, it's his third time on the show, so uh, can't wait for that. And Richard Latto, how are you doing? Hey, I'm very good, thank you. Very excited about speaking to Dean again, because each time we speak to him, he's usually in a different room of his house. So we're getting to see the full <laughs> house tour of, of his mansion where he's living. So I wonder which room it's going to be tonight. It's a bit like the Crystal Maze, isn't it? What's going to be behind this door? Well, my favourite was, of course, when he was in the understairs cupboard. Um, oh, yes. And his, and his little away. dog, Oscar, pops in and, and we, we see Oscar. And it was just, that was absolutely adorable. Yeah, anyone on here that's got a dog that will make an appearance or any form of pet, it's like bonus points, isn't it? The streaming figures go through the roof as soon as a cuddly <laughs> animal appears on screen. So that's good. Get some more viewers. Absolutely. Yeah. And how's your week been, Rich? Is it all been yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, really good, thanks. Yeah, it's absolutely flown by. I tell you what, it's so lovely that it's getting lighter again in the evening, isn't it? This is something that we mentioned last week. I've really noticed it this week. And you just get the feeling that the whole place, the whole planet is starting to smile a bit because the grass is growing, the flowers are coming out. It just, you know, if you've got children, it's just a blessing, isn't it? Particularly in these lockdown times. You can go out for a bit longer. It feels like everyone's a bit happier don't you think absolutely yeah and just to see the old crocus or whatever it is you know in the trees even the bluebells are kind of coming up thank goodness we're over that cold spell i know it feels so good doesn't it um and tonight we've got some uh, social media videos for everybody to see um it's the kind of usual mix i suppose of of social media videos that we've been watching so rich what have you seen this week that's caught your eye yeah well is this a usual one? I don't know. I mean, I usually choose something a bit nostalgic, don't I? It's the kind of thing I like. This is from uh, one of my friends, I think it's Robbie Harrison on Twitter, I noticed, tweeted this. He has uh, tweeted a video of a piracy film, an anti-piracy film. It went before new, normal traditional films, TV programmes that you would buy on VHS video. There'd be a little anti-piracy video right at the very start. 
And sometimes, if you go way back to the 80s and the 90s, there was one famously done by Simon Bates, who was a presenter on Radio 1 and Top of the Pops. And he was sat behind a desk, and he was kind of sneering at people and saying, don't pirate videos, piracy is a crime, this kind of thing. And then there was another one um, saying stuff like, you wouldn't steal a car, you wouldn't rob a granny in the street, so why do you copy VHS videotapes? which everyone kind of remembers that. I think that's one of the more recent <laughs> ones. But then the one in the middle, I mean, this one, I'd actually forgotten about this, but when I saw it, it's got the perfect kind of pangs of nostalgia about it. Because as soon as you see it, you think, gosh, yes, I do remember that. This is terrifying, and they used to put this on loads of videos, including, as Robbie Harrison's pointed out on Twitter, the front of children's video. So you get a video that was a certificate you, but this would be at the start. Have a look at this. The pirates are out to get you. Don't let them brand you with their mark. Piracy funds organized crime and will destroy our film and video industry. Piracy costs jobs and will destroy our music and publishing industry. It's so horrific. Pirates it's like awful, a isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And will destroy our development it is a and your future enjoyment. In the old day, Don't touch the hot stuff. But it's when you see Call that stash of videotapes he's got there, you think you want titles. is a matter is of fact. <laughs> And if you have any and if you work in a pirate VHS or... videotape, you probably wouldn't include the anti-piracy bit. No, would you? it'd be a waste of space, wouldn't it? <laughs> and it was just so bizarre as well. Like it's funding like terrorism, and it's funding all kinds of organised crime. It's not really. It's just a few people like copying the odd VHS tape in in the shed or whatever it might be. Yeah, but if you've ever bought any of those tapes, because you used to be able to buy them from people usually down the pub, didn't you? People with yeah. like a, a long Macintosh or something would come in and go, all right, mate, here's my list of titles, what do you fancy? <laughs> and if you did buy one, you either got home and found the tape was blank or something completely different, or even worse, it was what you wanted, but it was such a multi-generational copy. It was so far down the chain that it was practically black and white and it was all flickery. I remember buying The Exorcist, and Clockwork oh, yeah. Orange, that was another one that you used to be able to buy before it came out officially because that was banned for many years. But you could hardly watch them. It was almost painful watching them. But it did kind of add to the mystique of the movies, I think. So maybe I'm getting nostalgic. Absolutely. Well, nostalgic you know. for piracy. Well, hey. <laughs> People were getting nostalgic. We were talking about this before the show. Definitely nostalgic for the old Netflix logo at the very beginning of the show. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, this next uh, video that I found was about a lawyer in Texas who became a viral sensation on Tuesday after actually activating a cat filter during a court hearing. Check this one out. Japan, and I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to... Uh... Uh, we're trying to. We're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. Yeah, I think it's a filter. It, it, it is, and I place. don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to. Move I like the guy in the top right who just looks I'm so not, I'm not bored and angry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, uh, the I guy can, in the top right looks that. a little bit like the cat in the bottom right. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's cosplaying the cat. I love the fact that the lawyer actually says, I'm not a cat. <laughs> Just to make it perfectly clear that he's definitely not a cat. But did and, you only yeah. see that one this week, did you, Pete? Did you only see it this week? That's been doing the rounds for about two weeks. This is, you're, a bit of a, yeah, you're, showing, you're showing yourself as a Cornish curmudgeon there, aren't you? You know, Not catching <laughs> on to the latest trends. That is a good one, though. <laughs> it's a good one, and I absolutely love it. Uh, and we've got very much... A kind of a pet feel this week. Uh, English Bulldog um, uh, Incredibles. Um, I, I, you know, I absolutely, I absolutely love this, but it's very, very short. Let's see if I can just cue it up here. My bedtime uh, is at eight, but I don't go to bed because I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I, <laughs> so cute. We're talking and another little one as well. Um, that's 
Well, this is weird, this one, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, I, I'm not quite so sure what's going on. <laughs> RSPCA might want to get involved in this one. Which I can tell the tub is Tinky Winky, Tipsy, la, 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 and Motherfucking Pug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think. But, um, we're going severe. I think. What's going on with it? But it does break up a little tiny bit. Now let's see if we've got, we've. All right. How are? Hello. Good evening. I'm well. How are you? Very good. Yeah, very well indeed. Who was um, the mystery hand just then, Dean? We just saw someone pass you something there. Is that who was the mystery hand? A ghost. <laughs> no. Uh... Yeah, this is where you tell us you live alone. <laughs> yeah. I don't. No I don't idea. have a. I don't have a dog either. They're standing right behind you now. You must be able to feel them breathing on your neck. No. no my wife. My wife's just done a a quiz online, so she was just sent, giving the uh, the laptop, putting the laptop back in here because she was using it. Uh, right. Well, she's going to be she priming win? you with the quiz later. I'm sure. Um, she's not told me, so probably no. Ah, oh, never mind. We never win. We never win. So, what room have we got from your house this week, Dean? Because well, we've you were... been in so many now. Yeah, you'll recognise this room because I've been in it, but I've, this is a, another angle of it. Oh. So I was facing over there, but over the last few weeks, we've had a bit of a turn round again. Moved the bed to the window. My wife's got a little library as i call it and nice. i have my guitar over there <laughs> right. i thought you were gonna say and i've got an argos catalog over there which I <laughs> read occasionally it's, the same, it's the same room but we've just moved a bit of feng shui's gone on and we've uh, moved stuff around and uh and in in one of those frames it says i will not grow up yeah it's uh <laughs> all four of them are lyrics by frank turner so different songs. My mum made them for my 30th birthday. So they have to go up because if she came round and didn't see them up, she'd go mad. So they're up. And there's a bit of swearing on as well, so don't zoom in too much because there's a bit of swearing in. Go on then, give us your favourite quote from your wall there. Frank uh, my favourite one is a song called I Know I Knew Proof Rock Before He Got Famous. Everyone should check that out. Um the la the last line of the song is life is about love, last minutes and lost feelings, about fire in our bellies and furtive little feelings. Beautiful, Great. nice, lovely. Yeah, it's it's quite complex. I'm not even sure if I understand what it means, but I suppose <laughs> that's the idea. He's a very clever man, this Frank Turner. But hey, Dean, you're going to come up with better lyrics than that, aren't you, for us this evening? Oh yes, good. <laughs> So, what's your first song? And, oh, uh, is it? How I'm it? Yeah, why not? I'm because Shino Boy seems to be coming in and out. I can see him there in the bottom corner of your screen, Dean. And he, oh, look, there he is. Look. Well, Shino him... Boy, are you there? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm so sorry for the data connection. Wow, man. This is the clearest connection we've had all evening. Um,. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Can you tell us while you're connected there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Shino Boy by my name is Sammy. Well, hey man, you're you're kind of going in and out a little bit. Um, we got your name, and you're from Abuja, and I love your music. It's this kind of African reggae mix. Um, if you could play us a song, but I've got a feeling your connection is is gonna be gone again. Ah, oh, such a shame. Uh, this guy is such a legend, and uh, and he deserves lots of international praise because because um, he's so blooming good. Uh, type in Shino Boy into Facebook. Yeah, in the mean, oh, is he back? Oh no. Ah, all right, I'm gonna sign a boy. I'm back. You're back. Yeah. Can you give us a yeah, few yeah. bars of a song while you're connected? 
Yeah, I start. Go yeah. on, just give us a quick tune. Because, uh, I music. I love sounds. Love performing. Yeah, I love performing. And I do tracks and I do musical productions and all that. With us with my little equipment, I just pop a lot of things and do a little bit of his style and then up some lines and then Dazzle. Just got to do. Bring it out there. A lot of people will say, you know, boy, that track is nice. That track is nice. That track is nice. That's how it goes out. That's how it goes well, Sheena Boy, we love your music here. Um, if you can play us a song right now while you're connected, that would be ace. What do you think? Can you do it? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, can, I can play you a song. I can play you a song. Yeah, yeah. I can play you a song titled Reggae and Blue by me. It's a cool song, you know. What's it called, man? What's it called? Cool, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I got you. I'm just doing my little bit of my bro. You're looking at your life. Keep me your motherfucking bro. I'll take you to my life. I'm just doing my little bit of my bro. Looking at your life. I'm a teacher, stress, stick, you'll be okay. Thanks, man. Thank you. you need to unmute yourself yeah, so we can hear you as well. That. Thank you, man. All right. All the best, China boy. You take care. Look, next time you're around, better internet connection. If you can, like, go to an internet cafe or something like that, hook up to us. That would be awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Even with the bad connection, you just you know it's good music, don't you? It is. He is. He is awesome. And I'm the just, fact you can see his whole back catalog on Facebook as well is great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've just subscribed to his YouTube. <laughs> awesome. All right, Dean. Well, why don't you um, give us a uh, give us a tune? What What were you about to um, play for us? Um, I'm going to do a song called "Oh Emily" first. Um, when the third lockdown hit in January, I didn't have any new songs. Um, and I just have this idea to go back to my back catalogues because I've been recording music for like 10 years now. Um, so I made a list. The list is here. I've called it Lockdown Songs. I don't know if you can see it all. Yeah. Um, and originally it was about six or seven, but I've, I've turned it to 10. And I thought in lockdown, the third lockdown, if I get these 10 songs recorded properly, because um, a lot of the old stuff isn't good recordings and I didn't have the software and I didn't have the experience of, you know, recording very well. Um, so I thought, let's go back to all the songs that I have a soft spot for. And I thought pretty decent. Um, and let's try and do them a bit of justice. Um, and this one originally was from an EP called Fool, which I released in something like 2016, 15, maybe. And, um, and it's inspired from a TV show that you may have seen on channel four called hunted. Um, it's like a docu series where yeah, um, I absolutely it's really love good fun, hunting. Isn't it? Amazing, yeah, it's great fun. The f the first series for anyone who doesn't know it, it's um, 
a couple of people and they have to survive on the run for 30 days. Uh, they need to either camp out or, or stay in friends' bedrooms and, and sort of beg for money and stuff like that without getting caught. Uh, and in the first uh, episode, in the first series, there's a girl called Emily. Um, and I don't want to spoil it because it's all on 4OD for people to watch in, in England as well. <laughs> um, and her story is absolutely incredible. Um, she does end up winning. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I'm, I'll not. That's the only spoiler. But her story is fantastic. And I thought, I'm going to raise a glass and, and sing a song about her and, and um, write a song about her. And it's about her story. And it's called Oh, Emily. Now, remind me, because I've seen every... A uh, series of Hunted. I just don't remember Emily. Well, can Emily, you, can you remind me a bit yeah. of a backstory there? Emily and her friend, I think, were the only two to win. And halfway through, they split up because one of them got really paranoid that they were getting yeah, um, hunted. Yeah, I remember. And they split yeah, up. Sure. And and if you remember in the first series, the the, first, the last thing you had to do was get a helicopter. Yeah. And the final. I'm obviously spoiling it all now. But the final scene is them actually meeting up at the helicopter on the runway and and hugging each other and running into the uh, helicopter to, to fly off. And they both won the money after spending half the series not not in contact with each other. Mm. Uh, but she had a son um, that she really missed and she went back to see him even though um, the hunters were around. And she's so brave and, and she was called Emily Dredge. I don't know what she's doing now, but if you're out there, she's my hero. Um, but that's really what cra cracks me up about Hunted is that you get these moments that, and it's usually about 15 days in, yeah. that they have to see their family. Like yeah. it's just like it's something inside them is like they've got to get back, they've yeah. got to find their family, their friends, whatever it is. And it's like no, and every you can sense like everybody who's watching is going, don't go back. <laughs> the, the hunters are going to yeah. be there. It's a hundred like, grand that you got to win. <laughs> Don't see your family for 15 days and you win a hundred grand. No, I have to go and see him. <laughs> anyway, love, love the idea of the song. Emily, yeah, go for it. This is called Oh, Emily. You tied your pretty hair and Shed your friends To see if you can make it from The start to the end and All the coded messages you send the Screams determination That I can't comprehend You thought that if you ran You could be free Thought that if you ran, you could finally end what you have started and mend the broken hearted. Cause standing still just ain't the life for me. Oh, Emily. Not enough 
waters Open the curtains wide Your stomach it flutters And somebody lets you inside If life is a car crash And somebody's let you joyride Just don't let it pass you by Oh Emily Beautiful. That was really, really lovely. Really heartfelt, particularly when you consider it's someone that you don't actually know personally. It's just someone that you've got to know through, of all things, a TV game show. Really, yeah. I suppose it is a game show, isn't it? It seems yeah, weird it was, to yeah. call it that, but there was elements of drama, obviously, and and uh, realism to it. But at the end of the day, it was it was like an upgraded version of Treasure Hunt, wasn't it? <laughs> and um, it makes you it makes you think. You know, what would you do if you up to evade capture for thirty days? Do you Where's ever you have off? those dreams sometimes that you've done something like you've murdered someone or something, and then you wake up the next morning and for the first five minutes you still think? I've murdered something, I've got to leave the country, what do I pack? And then you realise, oh no, it's just a dream. Sadly, I haven't. Um, Good survival technique, though. Yes, it is, isn't it? Do you it? really have that dream, Mitch? Or no, you just no, made that up? Not, that, not quite that severe. I've I, I made that up. But sometimes, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you wake up and you think, oh, that was a really vivid dream about um, having to leave the country or having to do something. And, yeah, I suppose watching TV shows like that, you pick up tips and advice. Yeah. But, I mean... Who do you expect to appreciate and resonate that? You're obviously not just going for people that watch and remember that programme. You must think that there's nice common themes in there that everyone can relate to as well. Yeah, uh, I think bravery is the main thing, willing to do things that may be outside your comfort zone. Um, that's something I would like to do every so often. Um, yeah, it's just that, that, that shows, I just found it uh, really fun. And just incredible how paranoid you get, even though nothing's happening to you. But you just think the, the, the sort of human mind is going like, well, everyone's can see me now. Everyone is onto me, and that car is, you know, the hunters, and they're going to get me. But that shuts your mind, and it plays tricks with you. So I think it's about strength in overcoming that. That show is about. So um, you can sort of say outside of the show, it's about overcoming everything else in life, all the boundaries and barriers and stuff. Uh, but that show was just a great example of it, uh, and I can't wait for the next series. Um, I would apply for it, but I think you need to like have. Do you you must have need like a month off work, mustn't you? And not really a holiday, is it? That it must be a paid gig as well. I think that's what they do. Is it? it must surely they pay the contestants. If you're going to take a month off work, you can't do that for free, can you? Just that's for true. a laugh. Yeah. Um, but did, you watch you, the, did you watch the celebrity on. episode? Yeah, I was going to say, I was just about to say, <laughs> talking of Treasure Hunt, Annika Rice was on that, wasn't she? Yeah. And she did really badly. Yeah. And you think, what of all the people that surely has got to be good at that? In the first series, there was two of the normal show. I think there was two old ladies. And they just went around London on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> For the first day, and they got caught within about three hours. Because they just found them. They thought, oh, we'll just stick to London. <laughs> We'll be all right. This is what we know. Yeah. And of course, you, you can get lost in the city with more <laughs> CCTV cameras than any other city in the world. Yeah. That was their thinking. Yeah. Incredible Where would you shot. go? What would your plan be? Where would you hide? Well, I, I mean, don't reveal I... it if you have actually got a secret. You know, you have <laughs> you are going to hide. But If I have a secret bunker somewhere. Uh, the first thing I thought of was uh, my... Hannah's, my wife, um, her parents have um, a static caravan in Wales, like in deep Wales. They would know that. Do you, exactly. The hunters would know that straight Cause, away. Because I've got pictures of me on Facebook there, so they're just going to go there. This is what I mean about, it, it, it's got to be someone who wins that show, who's not on social media, who can survive in a tent for a, for a month, who can, you know, live off scraps, um, who don't, doesn't mind asking favours of people. It's a certain person, I think, who, who, who does well on that show. 
I would literally be a dead man. I'm like gluten free, <laughs> dairy free, egg free. I could not live off the scraps of the land. I'm sorry, it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> well, what you could do is you could kind of pretend that you'd gone to the static caravan in Wales. You could send them that message yeah. as if like you you'd gone there through social media and like dummy it up. And then go completely the opposite direction. I think that's that's the idea of the, the show. Really. Yeah, yeah, but they've got um, they can track your car edge, can't they? You'd need a, like a, a, a car that you haven't used before and take money from a bank you haven't used before. It's it's it, to win it, you must have to prepare so much to to sort of go on your own for thirty days. It's a bit like the quiz. So here we go. It's a uh, quiz time, oh. um, and it's the yes no quiz this week. Um, Richard Latto, have you ever played the Yes No quiz? Maybe. Oh, there you go, you we've see. got a good you, guy here. You don't say either of them. Des O'Connor used to do this, didn't he? <laughs> uh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dean, see if you can, um, see if you can beat Richard Latto there. Um... Do you think you can win this game? I shall do my best. Do you think you're good at it? So far. Say it again. So far. Yeah, so far. Do you think you're good at it? Average. Uh, better than the rest of us? You too. Certainly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll put it in another way. Are you going to win this game? Maybe. Do you want to win the game? Absolutely, I do. <laughs> because you've got to really want it, you know? 100%. Okay, ready to go? Definitely. No, I mean, are you really ready to go? <laughs> I'm really ready to go. I thought we started. <laughs> okay, so you've got to be completely honest, right? Um... Whatever I ask you, you have to tell the truth. The truth and nothing but. Are you okay with that? I think I can swerve it. Because it could get very difficult. Certain questions, definitely. I mean, it's just a game, isn't it? Just a game. We're all winners. It doesn't really matter that much. Definitely not. Would you like to have the superpower to become invisible? I'd rather have flight. If you is that all? It. Okay, I'll take the other one as well. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Would you really like to fly? Oh, I was, I was, oh, I was really going to say it then. Am I out? Oh. I'm not saying it. I was really going to say it. Different my tongue, it was. I would like to fly. Um, Dean, I've, I've, I'm not going to even continue. I think you've definitely won. You've beaten Richard. <laughs> so, Can I say very it? Good. so well done. Yes! Um, and do you know what the prize is, don't you? No. Ah! Oh! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Loser. You've got to um, you've got to find something that in your house that's slightly embarrassing. Um, embarrassing. Maybe you could reach behind you or find something. Uh, just ooh. a little bit embarrassing. Embarrassing. I think. That, well, we're not we're not in my bedroom, so you know, I don't think you're going to get anything embarrassing. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> what's in there, oh, I got, I've got one. Right, I uh, don't. Hopefully, my wife is not watching. But I ha I hide chocolate around the house. No way. <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> no. I'm a, honestly, I've got a, I've got a fear of of not having chocolate in the house. And when when I was self isolating last week, I just got a load of this. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Oh. Uh Rich has just gone to get himself some chocolate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise your one lone dairy milk bar with. <gasps> oh man! Uh. Someone told me how many calories are in one of them, and I was shocked. Wow! Cream eggs. Fifty pack of fifty. Those Where do you get them from? Horrible, man. Costco. 
Wow. Wholesalers, 12 quid, pack of 50. <laughs> Bargain. <laughs> I thought you were on some kind of slim fast meal thing. Oh yeah, well I am. So I balance it out. I've got the slim fast first, and then I have three or four um, <laughs> golden eggs to get me through the day. Oh god! <laughs> In fact, I might have one now actually. Oh, oh no, I'm they gone. are they are disgusting. Like They're you lovely. really shouldn't shouldn't eat them. It's on the on the other camera. Hang on. Um, let oh. me just uh, I'll, I'll bring up the other camera ad pin. There we go. That. Yeah, Cadbury's nice. cream egg. That brings me back. Every um every Easter, we me and my brothers used to do what we called a cream egg swap, and that's basically where we would have to exchange eggs because it was Easter, so we would have to give each other eggs. But while we were doing the cream egg swap, we would have to hit each other. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So uh, so every cream egg, you kind of hit the other brother that gave you, and you would kind of swap. So as so as you were kind of like grabbing it at the same time. I don't know. It was a very odd tradition. This I is Cornwall really again, it. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Awful. <laughs> so what we do in Cornwall? That's just for fun. Um, so I'm going to remove your pin. We're going to go back to Dean, and Dean, you're going to tell us what what other song you've got for us there. What have you prepared? Right, right you are. Um, I'm probably going to sing the one um, I've been releasing these YouTube videos of songs that I've recorded and uh, putting ly lyric videos together for them. Um, and I'm up to lockdown song number seven, I think, this week, uh, which was Oh Emily, which I played earlier. Um, and this one's I've already released. Uh, and I think you commented on, on the video saying you Yeah, liked I liked the video. It was awesome. You liked the video? It's, it's basically me recording the song in this room with mm -hmm. all the lyrics together. So there will be 10 eventually. Um, and my plan is just to keep going until lockdown ends. So if this pandemic keeps going for the rest of the year, then you will find me in this room making a song a week, uh, which is not going to do very do my life other outside of my music very good because i'll end up losing friends and my job um <laughs> but i'll try to keep a lid on it um this song is called know yourself and it's a very old song of mine um it was one of the songs that i wrote down the second on the list when i wrote my list uh, of lockdown songs to record and um, because i've got a really really um soft spot for it um, I wrote it to Asia to go when uh, me and my wife were the first started going out, and she was moving to moving in with friends in flats, and then moving to someone else, moving back in with the parents, and it was quite a, an odd time. And the song is about kind of formative years of finding out who you are and um, and where you fit into the world and where your partner fits in with you, um, which is something that um, can really build a relationship and make it stronger. Uh, we found out so um, I'm going to play it for you now it's called Know Yourself cool mm. well take it away man It's not like you 
to remind me of what it is to be good as if it's all inside me to be whatever I could now I'm dealing with motions and every flick of the eye these nights causing commotion just cause I whisper goodbye and it goes oh. Am I here for sure but you still don't know yourself like everyone Absolutely beautiful. What I really like about you, Dean, is that your voice is so unexpected. You know, you've got a great image as a, a rough and tumble, no nonsense guy. You've got your beard. You've got your you're swigging your beer back there. You're not going to take any nonsense from anyone. Yet you've got such feeling and emotion in the way oh. that you sing. I think that was beautiful. That was really Thank really nice. Much. And it's a, it's a gin and ginger ale, but not beer, <laughs> but. No, you're going to lose points off your street cred saying, now I'm trying to build your part up. Pretend it was some kind of rare beer or something. Um, no, that was great. And look, you must be itching to get back to doing gigs and actually performing live and actually performing in front of some form of a crowd, whatever type of crowd that's going to be when we come out of lockdown. We've been saying this every time that we've spoken. I don't know when it's going to happen now. Let's give up even guessing. But surely you must still be missing it. Yeah, I've done... Um... A couple of online gigs, not like this when there's people to talk to, but you know, you're given a 30 minute slot and you, you log in at this time and just play to your screen. And it's amazing what it does for your confidence having just having a couple of people clap at the end because it, you know, gives you a bit of drive to keep going. But when you stop playing a song and there's just silence and you're just tuning up again and, and you're going, well, that was, that was this song and, and this is, this is the next one. A couple of weeks ago, you know, in fact, New Year's Eve, we, um, we watched an online comedy show um, and it was so strange because 
you know, music, you play music and people clap at the end of the song, but there was a com- loads of comedians doing like 10, 15 minutes to like no laughing because there's no one there. It was so strange. Yeah, but I suppose, yeah, that's the best that we can do in this environment. But also, it's funny you should mention that because Pete has got something that he'd like to mention along the lines yeah, of comedy. Yeah, very true. Yeah, next week we've got John Pearson. We've got a new kind of part of CNLZ. We're doing a comedy session. Uh, join us, Dean. You should be in the front row. That's called the front row. Um, and basically, oh, it's great. try yeah. Yeah, and bring get. Bring the misses as well. You're both yeah, very well. <laughs> that would be that. amazing. Underdog. And, and, dog. and Oscar. Yeah, I think yeah, the dog of would course. course. <laughs> All right. So, so long as the RSPCA doesn't come after us, um, because the whole point is that people, will, comedians, will be able to have a go at whoever sat in the front row. That's basically the idea, isn't it, Pete? It is, yeah, exactly. So um, you sit in the front row, so there'll be a Zoom front row of around about six or seven people, and John will chat to the people on the Zoom. And he'll, like, maybe pick out your idiosyncrasies or, like, try and, you know, find that little thing in the background in your house, that kind of thing. So uh, so that's the idea. And f- for me, when I go to a comedy gig, like, the best bit, is when the comedian interacts with the audience. Like by far, it's better than all of the rehearsed things that they've got to say because you just never know what's going to happen. And there's always somebody who says something that's so surprising that you've never heard before. So that's the front row. That'll be on next week. So you're going to join us, Dean? I'll give it a go. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Great. And tell me as well, like you were in isolation, like how did that happen? Six days. Like tell us, tell us what you know what went on there because I've never had that. A message from the app to say that I should be in isolation. What happened? Yeah, I mean, you're to, other than my dog and, and Hannah, you're the only two people I've seen for a week. Um, so I was working normally. I mean, we're socially distancing. We're not going to see many people. Um, but the day after I did a, a home visit, there was a, a notification on my uh, COVID app to say... Um, You've been in the vicinity of someone with a positive test. Please isolate now for six days. And this red pulsating glow of six started, uh, you know, pulsating at me on the screen. So it was like, okay, fine. Um, And I think I've caught with lockdown all right. Like I said before, I'm a bit of a homebird anyway. But to be told that, you know, you can't even go out and walk the dog. uh, Psychologically, it was quite difficult because you always have so that. was there like a countdown like did it start at six and then go down five yeah. four three did it yeah yeah and then I, on it? the last day i got an app saying um your know, self-isolation is complete at midnight nice and i thought what am i going to do at midnight i'm just going to run out the house <laughs> and, and did the app go <laughs> in your <laughs> yeah the countdown clock <laughs> yeah well at least you've come out of it fairly sane wouldn't you say hasn't a, it hasn't scarred you has it the experience uh, no, this is this is my sixth gin so <laughs> no no it's fine no yeah I've got, I, 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 this this is what kept kept me sane really recording these songs again getting back into old stuff and uh, making them better and, and having something to focus on outside of work and, and these four walls so um I'm really excited about it I'm, I'm gonna keep going until uh, until we're allowed to do normal stuff again I think because my app seems to have gone very quiet. It's not really told me anything. It used to like punch me a few messages every so often and tell me what what kind so, of um, lockdown I was in. Sometimes the app just goes loading and then yeah. do nothing. Does nothing, yeah. Is it, is it at the top of my phone, it goes loading. We're thinking about something. <laughs> no, go back to normal life. It's fine. Because I'm, I'm a... I'm a big believer that, you know, through technology, we could actually solve this. But obviously, you know, it's worked in your case. Well, and there was nobody policing the fact that you were not going out. It was just telling you that you should I don't stay. think so. I heard that um, they can monitor how the radius of where you are. But how do they know where you live? Surely, mm. I don't know. I mean, they, they could. So it might come up saying, right, he's left 20 metres away from his house. Let's go and have a word with him. But. You know, I'm not I'm not organising raves in 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 um, you know old warehouses that have been disused and 300 people in it. Uh, you know, I'm just going in my back garden and doing a Joe Wicks. That's all I'm doing. So you were allowed in your garden? 
The garden was fine. Yeah, it said on the, um, you click on a thing saying uh, support and advice, and it said, uh, you must not leave your house, but you can exercise in your garden if you want to. Oh, well, fair enough. So this is where they've run into trouble in Kent, isn't it, with all those different variety of viruses they're picking up there is they must have misunderstood that because ken is referred to as the garden of england and they must have thought <laughs> great we could just go anywhere we want in ken no they mean your own garden don't they <laughs> well dean went to kent on holiday last year you didn't pick up anything strange in kent did you no i had a lovely time in kent yeah, it was great yeah more lockdown holidays to come, I'm sure. And um, tell you yeah, what, we, we did never... do. Well, go sorry, on. sorry to interrupt. It was my wife's birthday a couple of weeks ago, and the best present if you're if someone you you live with is uh, locked down for birthday, two words or it might be one word, hot tub. You yeah. can rent you can rent a hot tub, and we rented one really? for our back garden with wow. a gazebo. You have it you have to keep it on all day. Got home from work, put the bubbles on. You're in. In your own back garden, it's raining. It was snowing a couple of weeks ago. We were in it. It was brilliant. Wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, you put us to shame. But <laughs> also, you're quite lucky. If your wife's birthday was a couple of weeks ago, you can say this is a combined birthday and Valentine's present. Yeah, kill two birds with one stone. There, it's always exactly a week before Valentine's Day, so I can I always say it, it's for both. Yes. If we go away to our hotel, it's for both. <laughs> Sensible, yes, yeah. exactly. I piled it all into the one a super gift. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks, Dean Lane. Thanks, Shino Boy, for trying to join with us as well. Next time, we'll, we'll have you on if you've got a really good internet connection. Um, Richard Latto, it's been a great week. And next week, we have John Pearson on the front row. And Ooh. you'll be introducing John. Have you had a chance to have a look at his um, YouTube yeah, Tell yeah, he's a funny guy. Yeah, I've had a look at that. He's got a good social media presence. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be very acidic with uh, the victims that go to the front row. It's so <laughs> honourable that Dean and his good lady wife decided you're to be there. You're meant to be encouraging people to do it. <laughs> What's his name? I'll, I'll have a look at his stuff. John, John Pearson. Uh, you yes. can check him out on um, YouTube. He's actually very, very good with people, and uh, he won't he won't be too acidic. I don't I don't think anyway. You never you never know. You might catch him on a bad day. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Dean. Uh, we'll should... see you again, no doubt, in about probably four or five months' time. Um, yep. And uh, and yeah, join us again next week. John Pearson on the front row on CNLZ Live, and we'll see you there. Take care.